Hi everyone, welcome to day two of Compassion Practices for Challenging Times. I'm Beth Terrence and I'm really excited to continue with you today. We still have some folks coming into the group and I will be keeping the registration open through the end of the week. So if you do know anybody who might like to join us, you're welcome to invite them. In today's practice, I talked about metta or loving kindness meditation which is uh, one of the foundational practices that I've worked with for going on about two decades now and um, find it's really one of the most potent ways to create uh, a strong foundation for compassion and loving kindness within ourselves. And in the Buddhist tradition, it's talked about um, that in order to have compassion and love and kindness for others that we need to first cultivate that for ourselves. So um, sometimes with our Western culture that goes a little against our grain. We might have been taught that it's better to love others first or it's selfish to love ourselves. So I like to just touch on that to be aware to notice what arises and really just hold this intention particularly the next few days of just beginning to create this foundation of compassion within yourself and that that begins with loving ourselves. So I'm going to lead a short guided practice um, that you can work with for the next couple days. I'll be sharing a little more about this tomorrow um, and then um, something that I really do suggest you come back to again and again and to use as part of your foundation in compassion practices. Um, but that being said, I will be sharing a variety of practices and what I have found in my work as a holistic practitioner and facilitator um, of spirituality and um, meditation and mindfulness over these last 20 years is that everybody's different. And so it's really important to explore different practices to find what resonates with you and that even at different times in our lives, different things might be called for or work for us more strongly and so particularly with our focus here on compassion practices for challenging times I just encourage you to just explore be open be curious and listen to what um, what your guidance is and how you respond to the different practices and if you could find you know one or two or a few that are, are supportive for you particularly in these challenging times then um, that's my hope so so I invite you to find a comfortable position. You can sit cross-legged on the floor or have your, um, if you're on a chair, have your feet flat on the floor. Um, if you'd like, you can lay down for this practice. People tend to drift when they're laying down. So my, my recommendation, at least in the sort of learning process, is to do it sitting um, on a chair or on the floor. And so you can have your spine straight but not tense, your shoulders and stomach relaxed, your hands on your knees or your lap. If you're comfortable um, closing your eyes, you can do so, or you can always just have a soft gaze a few feet on the floor in front of you. And then I'll invite you to begin with a few deeper breaths, breathing in for a count of five and out for a count of five, just letting your body and your mind begin to slow down, to unwind, I might close my eyes a little bit with you. And just noticing if you feel tension in your body, you can let those next few breaths gently wash over those areas. Also, if you feel any busyness in your mind, any thoughts or worries of the day, noticing it. And just allowing those thoughts or worries to move out with the next few breaths. Just like a cloud passing by in the sky, you notice it and then it simply drifts away. And finally, letting your breath move to its own natural rhythm wherever it feels to rest in this moment. I'm going to ring the bell three times. The first ring will be for all those who have meditated before us.
the second ring for all those of us who are meditating together in this circle, knowing wherever we are uh, in this uh, journey, to, we are together in a circle, in a virtual sangha or community. And the third ring will be for all those who will meditate in the future. Just allowing the sound of the bell to lead you into silence. And now beginning to bring your breath and awareness into your heart center, right in the center of your chest, center of love, compassion, gentleness for yourself and for others. We touched on this yesterday, and it's something I'll include in a lot of our practices. It can be its own practice of just breathing and bringing your awareness into the heart and tuning into those qualities of the heart of love, compassion, gentleness for yourself and for others. There's an opportunity there to just notice how it does it feel when you connect. Sometimes it feels open and spacious. Sometimes you may notice some resistance or constriction. And as you practice, you may notice some shifts and changes. So now I'd like you to begin to work with this idea of, I've talked about, of metta, of loving kindness meditation that comes from the Buddhist tradition and how we create a foundation for loving kindness and compassion is um, in one of two ways. Um, the first is connecting with someone whom we feel a strong connection to a sense of unconditional love flows from this person to us and vice versa. And so sometimes that's a grandparent, um, a mentor, sometimes it's even one of our animals. And you know, all of our life experiences are different, so sometimes it's harder for people to connect to certain people or others. So if an animal, or even a place in nature can be that place for us where we just feel really connected and held in the energy of unconditional love. So that's the first way. And then the second way is by creating a circle of loving beings. And in um, the quote I shared today by Albert Einstein, he talks about widening our circle of compassion. And so I want us to kind of focus on this idea of creating our own inner circle of compassion as a way to strengthen our, our center and then extend that out. So I'm just going to guide us in that for a few moments. So again, just with your breath and awareness, just feeling that heart center. And then calling to mind someone who is uh, that person who you feel that sense of unconditional love from. Think of maybe the person in your life or being, again, if it's an animal or place, just where you felt that most strongly, where you felt most held in unconditional love. And imagine yourself sitting right now across from that being and just feeling their love for you and how you feel in their presence. And if you'd like, you can make a connection from your heart to their heart. And just taking that energy in for a few moments, really breathing it into every atom and cell of your being. Just allowing yourself to be bathed in that energy of unconditional love. And eventually we'll work with some phrases that are used in metta practice. And people often think of that as the practice. But it's really creating this foundation of, of connecting to the energy and quality of loving kindness and compassion. 
allowing yourself to really feel that and embody that in this moment as you sit with this person who just has brought you that deep sense of unconditional love in this lifetime. And then I'll invite you to continue to expand that by creating a circle of loving beings. So most likely this person, this being, will stay in your circle. And now you'll imagine yourself sitting in the center of a circle. And you're creating your own circle of compassion, your own circle of loving beings. And so this may be people in your life, such as this, this being. It may be other family or friends. Uh, animals are often a source of our unconditional love. And it can also be perhaps universal beings, people or um, saints or um, sometimes we feel it's angels. So any energy or being of a human or spiritual quality that you feel a sense of compassion and love and support from. Um, and it should be all positive. So I just want to really stress that. Sometimes we have mixed feelings. We have a family member or friend who we feel that sense of love and yet there's a conflict or something and other feelings come up. And so there's opportunities to work with that and we will do that in this program in a variety of ways. But for now, just inviting you to really choose people who you just feel that sense of warmth and compassion and positivity. And so I like to include um, for myself like Buddha and Mother Teresa, um, Kuan Yin, um, the Dalai Lama. Uh, some people will include like Jesus or Mary, you know, based on your maybe spiritual beliefs um, or just, you know, beings that have been an inspiration or a connection that help you connect to that energy of love and compassion. And so you'll just surround yourself by these loving beings, as many as you like. And sometimes it's better to work with living beings um, who are in your personal life, because um, sometimes you know it brings up some sadness if it's someone you've lost. So I just like to mention that. And sometimes that's fine. We're all a little different. So. Surrounding yourself in that circle of loving beings once again, just feeling the love and compassion that comes from these beings and just breathing it in with each breath, breathing it into every atom and cell of your being. Letting it fill you. And as you breathe out, just feeling it surround and envelop you. And just noticing how it feels to take this time to just create this space for yourself, to allow yourself to be surrounded and enveloped in the energies of loving kindness and compassion. Noticing if, it, if you feel any resistance to that, and just noticing. And just allowing yourself to take it in for a few more moments. So again, just breathing it into your whole being, every atom and cell, feeling yourself vibrating with this energy of loving kindness and compassion. And so that's really the foundation of metta practice. So I'll invite you to just take a few moments to come back, take some deeper breaths. Um, you might want to move your hands and feet a little bit. If you feel to stay there a little longer, you can pause this, this video. I'll come back to it. And um, so again, we'll continue with this in a few different ways, but that's what I, I'll talk about is sort of creating that foundation of compassion through metta practice. Um, and the next extension of that is offering phrases for ourselves and then for others, which we will also explore. Um, but this, again, um, sort of, I think, a heart of our practice in this journey of compassion practices for challenging times is really allowing yourself to create that foundation of loving kindness and compassion for yourself. So I encourage you to be open to exploring that. Um, do some journaling if you um, just to notice what arises. If you do have any resistance or you want to share that, we can talk about um, ways to work with that. 
um, which will be a part of how we practice compassion for ourselves. So I know, um, just want to share that we will be, a lot of us are dealing with difficult feelings and that's going to be an important part of what we explore during this time. But I really want to start with us creating this container and this foundation for self-compassion uh, as we begin to move through this program. So I thank you again for joining me and I look forward to hearing from you. Um, some folks are just participating by email, some are in the Facebook group, um, but happy to hear any reflections, comments, questions at any time. Okay, I wish you a beautiful day and I'll say um, as we do in um, the tradition of one of my teachers and the Buddhist tradition, Tashi de la, which means I honor the greatness within you.